In today's video, we are going to be looking at a new revision of the Nerd QX model. So obviously these two are the normal Nerd QX and then the Parasite Pool Edition. But today we have a new one coming out onto the market, which is called the Nerd QX, which is kind of a different revision from the Nerd QX. And we'll take a look at everything because we like to showcase newer miners on the channel. We did a video a couple of days ago showcasing a bunch of new future Bitcoin miners that are coming out. So if you want to see what's coming in the works from a lot of people around the space, then go check out that video. But today's video, we're looking at the Nerd QX, and it's basically a revision of these Nerd QX models with better overclocking capability, more hash rate, things of that nature. So let's head over to the computer because we don't actually have a model right now, obviously. It's just come out, I believe, a couple of days ago, fully revised. But we'll head over to the computer and we'll show you what the Nerd QX is and we'll be looking into pricing of it, see if we'll get it in the future. So right here we have the Nerd QX. So as you can tell, this is a kind of revised version of the Nerd QX and a different placement for a lot of things. I'll just point out a couple of things that we see in the design change here. I think this is still the same heatsink potentially. You have three fan slots here. You have a Bitax style of heatsink to cover the voltage regulators and they've also switched places so whereas with the node Q axis they were going down and you had the screen going in this direction. The VREG is now by here. They have an XT60 power supply and they also have a different fuse. So those are the main differences that you see with each of them. But we'll get into figures and things like that later on. So this is supposed to be just a revised version of the Nerd QX with better overclocking capabilities. So with the Nerd QX, with the overclocking, you could only get it up to 6 terahash and then I believe the main actual difference was the fuse that you had in here. On the Node QX, the fuse I think is 10, but they have it, I think it's 15 on this one. And a lot of people were saying in comments when we were overclocking the actual Node QX is that there is a set limit in the firmware which doesn't allow it to go pretty much past 6 to 7 terahash, depending on the chips. So if anyone's tried to overclock them and not gotten anywhere, further than 7 terahash is because there's something in the firmware which is blocking it but I believe that that has been overridden on this revision of the new QX line and I think that's always a good thing a lot of people were using their own kind of custom firmware to get around the older firmware and start overclocking it more but then that ran the risk of blowing out the fuse by here I also like to see these connectors I believe that we have the XT30, which is on, I believe that this is the XT60, but there is an XT30 on the Zyber 8, but I believe that this is slightly bigger, and this is called an XT60, which is pretty industry standard kind of connectors. So we're seeing a migration over to more industry style miners as we go on. There's a lot of pictures on here that we could look at. You can see here, there's also a fan that could go potentially on top of the heatsink. So that's probably why there's more fans added there. And then there's also a back fan modification that you can do to obviously give you better efficiencies in that regard. Then you can see there, that is getting up to around eight giga hash. I'm sure it can go way higher, but we'll take a look into the figures very soon. But at that hash rate, you are paying $57 per tera or £57 per tera hash. And that is actually technically slightly better in terms of the price. I know that overall the Nerd QX and the Nerd QX are technically the same miner, just with different revisions in terms of the chip amount and the capability to overclock. You're basically paying a little bit more to be able to overclock whilst having the actual stable overclock ability. With the Nerd QX, it wasn't very stable. With this version, I believe it's more stable. Normally, the Nerd QX goes for around £410, so an extra £80 to get that ability with this, and it's all coming into one. You don't have to do any modifications on your Nerd QX. 
and that only showed 8 giga hash as I said we'll get into the numbers but you can see here there's a 15 views here we'll look at that later and then there is also a new revision that we would like to see on maybe the Nerd QX in the future is the VREG heatsink. So you have a bit axe heatsink covering all the voltage regulators and then a fan cooling that one down. There you can just see other pictures of it and I believe that that is the logo displayed on the LCD. So it doesn't really say much in terms of what we're looking at here. On the pleb base article I will leave a link to this I know that it's sold out right now currently I don't think they made very many of them but maybe if you're watching this in the future they might have it available so I'll leave a link to both this article and the website which is IX tech but this article covers mainly what's new in here as it says here nerd QX rev 5.1 so that's the newest one that we have for the nerd QX it's based on top of that with the same ASIC processors and different architecture and new features added in. Again, here's the new features, new PCB and geometry design, which we kind of covered then. Mountable heat sinks on the voltage regulator, XT60 power connector, simplified fuse, which is one of the main limitations for overclocking, I believe. Additional four pin fan connector for the voltage regulator heat sink. And here is the specially adapted firmware, so allowing to actually overclock past that 7 terahash range that you would on a new QX. A new power supply and direct temperature measurement per ASIC, which we can see a picture of here. So you have ASIC chip temps on each ASIC chip, which would be good to see because we were talking about that maybe two videos ago. We we're trying to potentially do a test of what's the best thermal paste and we we're going to do on each individual chip. I've never seen anyone actually come out with firmware that measures each individual chip temperature but obviously this does so we could do the test on that if we ever get one of them. So this just covers the design philosophy I think we'll kind of skip over that. PCB geometry slightly different here. Whereas with the Nerd QX, the circuit board was oriented vertically, this design allows for many setups also presented a challenge with extremely hot areas around the voltage regulator, which is, I believe, by here. Although this area could be actively cooled with the Nerd QX Helix, which is a kind of back mount for the Nerd QX, there was no practical solution that would fit under the display. And then the fuse, which was the main thing that we ran into in overclocking, so the SMD fuse used at the time also had its limitations. It was unusual, difficult to replace, and did not offer an easy way to visually check the function. With the Nerd QX, this concept is consistently further developed. The fuse remains, but has been massively improved. Instead of SMD variant, a mini automotive fuse is now used. And you can kind of see that there. So, so this is slightly different to the fuse. Normally, I would equate it to... The one on the Nerd QX is just a fuse that you'd see in a plug. If you open up a plug, you would see a fuse in there. But this is kind of an automotive one, which is slightly different design and probably easier to source overall. You can also see the voltage regulators there, whereas they normally would be going down here. And then the power supply has also changed as well with the screen going there, not across here. And this is the main thing that we were talking about in terms of the fuse size. So 15 amp fuse compared to the 8 amp, which was for the Nerd QX. And this offers enough leeway for controlled overclocking without compromising the protective function. That's the main thing that we were talking about with the fuse is that they all were 8 or I think somebody had 10 amp fuses that they were using. But now they have a 15 amp fuse, which is going to be easier to control overclocking in the future. Changes in the power connection, which we already kind of discussed. It says here, long been standing on the bit axe and also the Nerd QX, which is proven in practice. However, it become outdated at least since the Nerd QX++. As I said, the Zyber 8 did have that for quite a while, way before any of these ASICs started using them. And they introduced the XT60 power connector and it comes from industrial and RC sectors and is designed for currents up to 60 amps. So it's definitely better for when you start to increase hash rate, you'll put in a lot more current through. 
it's easier to handle using these. I don't think, actually, now that I'm looking at it, the XT60 is not used for the Zybrate. It's the XT30, I believe. But they're still industry standard stuff. And then another main feature that we just talked about was the voltage regulator heatsink. I think the iX Tech also sell these as actual bitax heat sinks. Maybe this one's custom to the voltage regulator, but I believe that you can also get these for just the regular bitax or bitax gamma if you want to. And we were going to do a video comparing them, but I haven't got around to buying one, so maybe we'll do that later on. And it says here, this decision was not a market employee, but a question of standards. Copper conducts heat more efficiently than aluminium, so you can see there you have two revisions of it. You could, I guess, in theory, use either one. And that allows for significantly lower power consumption, so better efficiency, cooler circuit board, more stable ASIC, and OC ready. No additional cooling required in terms of sticking on your own copper or aluminium smaller heat sinks, which we normally do with basically all of our miners, including the Nerd Q-axes. And then the additional fan connector, so one for the voltage regulator, and then one for the normal fan, and then potentially one for the back fan. We've never really made a revision where we use two fans for the node QXs, but maybe that might be the next upgrade to it. And then here's the real interesting part of it, which is the own firmware. So there's no need to reinvent the wheel, but you can perfect it. The node QX relies on Proven ESP or node QX minor or node QX firmware and is developed and maintained by the open source community. However, it has been extensively adapted and expanded, optimized for Node QX. One of the most striking innovations for the first time, a frequency of up to 1000 megahertz can be selected directly in the firmware. So whereas if you look on the Node QX, if we go here and we go to settings, I believe we can only go up to 600 in terms of the frequency, and then the core voltage is 1200. But here it looks like you can go up to, all the way up to a thousand on the frequency. I don't know what they have as the core voltage, but frequency is only 600 that you can go up to on the normal node QX. And then maybe the core voltage is default. You have the same thing, automatic fan control that you see by here. And then I think their default is 777. So this default is 600. Don't know why particularly, but because it's thermally stable at that point, I guess. So you have better kind of optionality in terms of overclocking. I know that you can technically change it. And this is the Nude Q X OS, I guess that's what they're going to call it. Looks a little bit different. You have power, input voltage. I believe that the power goes up to around 200 watts on this. And then the ASIC voltage, ASIC temperatures. So you can see those four displayed. That was probably custom made. Fan speed, voltage regulator, and then fan RPM, ASIC frequency, and ASIC voltage measured. Same sort of thing, sh shares, efficiency, best difficulty, so on and so forth, with a hash rate of around 8,120 giga hash. And then they have a power supply that comes along with it, but I don't know what that power supply technically is. So it comes standard with a 240 watt power supply, which delivers stable 12 volts, even under high load and overclocking. Currently we have two node QXs sitting on a 350 watt power supply, but obviously you need more watts to overclock in this regard. And we kind of covered this, the ASIC temperature measured on each individual chip, which is great to see. I'd like to see some revision of that for all of the miners that we kind of have, node QX, Cyberate, BitX Hex, that's a new revision and I hope a lot of people start to implement that in the future. So here's the real thing, test data and results. So they have eco mode, default, and then OC mode, kind of like we see with the Zyber 8 as well. And that can get up to around 8.1 terahash. And obviously the efficiency starts to kind of drop off as you start to overclock. What did they have as the efficiency up here? 17.86 joules per terahash, that's not bad seeming that there's a lot of overclocking going on. And then there's a comparison between the two miners here, so node QX and then node QX++. Same ASIC voltage, same hash rate, better ASIC temperature, better VREG temperature, and slightly better power, 
with UI and then slightly better power with smart meter. So definitely overall kind of extending the life of the node QX. You have the same thing here, 8.1 tera hash, better ASIC temperature, better VREG temperatures, and better numbers across the board here. And as I said, you can read this full thing. I think this is the node or the NQ helix, which actually attaches to the back. And that's going to give it better cooling on the back of the board, as you can kind of see it here. So it's on a stand facing horizontally instead of the standard vertical that you see on our setup. You can read the whole article if you want. I've left it in the description. But it does say it's available from IX Tech, obviously. And as we can see, they've all sold out. I don't think they made too many of them. Small, highly specialized US company that is uncompromisingly focused on quality, precision, and customer satisfaction. And they have been doing a lot of things, making new heat sinks, obviously revising a lot of things from the Nude QX. And yeah, that was just kind of a video to display it. So you guys can let me know in the comments what you think about this new revision of the Nude QX. And let me know if you'd actually want to buy one of these in the future. As I said, not available right now, but I'll leave a link in the description if it ever becomes available again. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.